invariant vectors of conjugate. The whole set consists of the set of all admissible n tuples, namely all S satisfying um, that S is not the difference of two positions in P. And uh, here's some remarks. Um, usually, uh, you start the other way around. You have some rule set of a game. And it's a subset of, uh, it's determined by the rule game, by the rule set of the game. Here we don't have an a priori uh, rule set, but uh, we are only given the p positions. And therefore the rule set is to use all admissible vectors as move. And the task is to find when is, um, A given position admissible when it's inadmissible. Uh, we do not know whether there exist invariant rule sets for our red games that do not allude to the sets of P position. In uh, a previous paper that was just published this year, such game rules were given for the cases m equals 2 and m equals 3, but they were variant, not invariant. Um, as I uh, hinted before, to make the theorem usable, we need an effective algorithm to decide, given any m tuple a x, whether x is inadmissible or admissible. Um, so we have several approaches to establishing such an efficient algorithm. Um, yeah. Here I say we sketch one of them using an example, but uh, given the time I, and given the technicality of this uh, um, algorithm, I think I will skip that. But, um, but, uh, but here is, uh, before we come to the algorithm, here is something which uh, might please the one a little bit. Um, so here's an example for m equals 4. And here are the p position of the rats in the form I gave before, namely the integer part, 15 over 8, n, and so on. Now, we can also write this without the integer part in order to please the one. And it has this matrix form. And to prove that these two things are equivalent, I'll do that by example. The one likes to do it by example. So let's take uh, the easiest example I can see here, which is still a bit non-trivial, is the case n equals 4. Um, yes. N equals 4. So 15 over 8 times 4 is 15 over 2. Integer part is 7. So you see here the 7, because t is 0 when n is equal to 4. t is the integer part of 3 over uh, 8. And uh, then 15 over 4 times 4 is 15 minus 1 is 14. And you see it here. And then uh, we have 15 times 2. It will be 30 minus 3 is 27. And then finally 15 times 4 is 60 minus 7 is 57. You can see other uh, structure in this uh, matrix. So for example, here, after the eight first rows, you see one, three, and five repeat, but the t is now one, because uh, eight over eight is already one. And uh, here, uh, you have the same thing, two, six, ten, fourteen, but then this mod fifteen, this is again two, and this is six, mod fifteen, so, so 
And you see here again the two, six, ten, and similarly here. So there's lots of structure, and there's other structures, not only the raw structure, but there is also the difference of the columns also have, has a nice structure. Maybe we come back to that. Um, so uh, the raw gaps of the matrix uh, is summarized here a little bit more formally. Um, so, uh, yes, so this is essentially what I said before. And here it's expressed formally. And uh, so here we can see it again. Um, 2 to the m minus 1 times n over 2 to the m minus i is, for any i is periodic mod 2 to the m minus 1. Um, and here is a sketch of inadmissibility algorithm, which I think um, I will skip. Um, Um, now let's look at the structure of the column gaps. We looked before at the structure of the row gaps. So look at the first uh, row. You see there it says 1 and then 2. That's twice 1. And then 4 is twice 2. And 8 is twice 4. Now look at the second row. Uh, we have 3 and then 6. That's twice 3. And then 12 is twice 6. However, 23 is twice 12 minus 1. And then in the third row, uh, it will be 5 times 2 is 10, but uh, twice 10 is 19 is, is 20, and here it's only 19. But 19 times 2 is 38. So how, what, what's, what's going on? So here is the lemma. Um, so here is the, 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 the columns from 1 to n minus 1 and any n. Rn j plus 1 is what we just saw. It's either 2r j n or 2r j n minus 1. Moreover, the binary representation Bn minus 1 of n minus 1 indicates which of the two values is a soup. If Bn minus 1 has a 0 in column j, then Rn j plus 1 is twice R. If it has a 1 <coughs> in column j, then Rn j plus 1 is 2 Rn j minus 1. So when n is equal to 1, we have to look at n minus 1, which is 0, and then everything is 0, and therefore everything is exactly twice the former column. Um, now when n is equal to 2, then n minus 1 is 1, the representation is uh, 1 in binary, and therefore the last column is 2, uh, two 12, Minus 1, only 23. And for 3, we have to look at the representation of 2, which is 0, 1, 0. And therefore, 10, twice 10 is uh, 20, and here it's only 19. And let's take one more, which is 4. And so we have to look at 3. So only twice times 7 is 14. But then uh, twice times 14 is uh, 28, but it's only 27, and twice 27 is 54, and here it's only 56. I hope it's more or less clear. And uh, this gives you just another um, way of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of producing a polytime algorithm. Now, um, I think there are seven more minutes left. And I thought that in honor of Doron, who 
dislikes presentations with the laptop, I should also do something on the blackboard maybe, and uh, maybe give a proof from the book. So you have a choice, either to prove that, uh, I think he knows, knows all of that, either um, to show that, which I mentioned at the beginning, that for arithmetic sequences, the two largest moduli have to be the same, or to prove that there are irrational, for BT sequences, uh, that uh, if, if alpha one, uh, alpha is irrational and beta is irrational, and one over alpha plus one over beta is one, then uh, they are uh, n alpha and n beta are uh, in fact uh, complementary. Which one do you want? There's time for the most one. I haven't seen either. What? I, don't know, I don't know if I get to vote, but I would pick the integer one. Either one. The integer one, the arithmetic sequences. This is the one the first one. The first one. The first one. The elders like the one done. The one of... Uh, then you have arithmetic sequences. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, so, uh, so, here's N uh, alpha i plus B i, where i goes from 1 to M. And m is at least two. Here we don't need three, but, two. but certainly it's not two for m. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we knew this in the, in the book that m is at least two. And uh, suppose we arrange them without loss of generality in this form. <clears throat> so let's look at the generating function now. Uh, which Herb liked very much, Herb Wolf. Uh, he had this book, Generate, Generate Functionology, or something like that. And um, let's look at the uh, z to the bi over 1 minus z to the ai, which is equal to z to the bi times 1 plus z to AI plus to the two AI and so on. So it's uh, it's equal to the summation uh, of uh, of uh, uh, Z to the N AI plus BI and we use them for equal to zero to yes to zero right and so you see the, the exponent is exactly those uh, arithmetic sequences so what's the statement of uh, complementarity it says that the uh, summation of uh, Z, you, you like Z or Z or Z? Z. What? Z. In United States, Z. Z. In Canada, okay. yes. Z to the, um, no, yes. Sorry. Z to the BI over 1 minus Z to the AI is equal to uh, Z over 1 minus z, because this thing is just z times 1 plus z plus z squared and so on. So it gives you exactly all the integers, right? This is a statement of complementarity. All right, now let uh, uh, can I continue here? Let uh, zeta be a primitive AM 
root of unity root of unity means that zeta to the am is equal to 1 and primitive means that no smaller exponent will do and now let um, z approach um, approach zeta then um, since uh, since uh, m is at least 2 um, z, uh, zeta is not 1 uh, so this will just be some complex number uh, bounded uh, uh, fixed a uh, fixed uh, complex number. Here, if we assume that AM minus 1 is less than AM, then all the terms up to AM minus 1 are also bounded. And there is a single term, namely the one with uh, AM, that explodes. See, we have a contradiction. That's a proof. It's a proof of the book, no? Um, I think in uh, 10 seconds my time is up, so I have to uh, thank you for listening to me, and uh, I even don't have time for the conclusion. Uh, but that's okay. It's enough. Thank you.